severe dyslipidemia defined as a LDL cholesterol level of equal to or greater than 190 affects nearly 14 million adults of the US population. The prevalence of severe dyslipidemia was stable at nearly 5.4 percent between 2011 and 2020 in the US adult population. Among individuals with severe dyslipidemia, nearly three out of four individuals underwent cholesterol evaluation between 2011 and 2020. However, only one in two individuals with severe dyslipidemia were aware that they had hypercholesterolemia across the study period. The most notable finding of our study was that only one in three individuals with severe dyslipidemia were reported to be on statins. Hello, my name is Naman Shetty. I'm a clinical research fellow in the Division of Cardiovascular Disease at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. I'm the first author of the manuscript entitled Trends of Lipid Concentrations, Awareness, Evaluation and Treatment in Severe Dyslipidemia in U.S. Adults, which will appear in the February 2024 issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our study aimed to examine the population level trends of cholesterol evaluation, awareness and statin use in individuals with severe dyslipidemia. We utilized data from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey or ENHANCE for our study. The ENHANCE is a biennial survey that aims to assess the health and nutritional status of the civilian non-institutionalized population of the United States using a sample population. We utilized data from four ENHANCE cycles between 2011 and 2020. Our study included non-pregnant enhanced participants aged 20 years or older. We utilized fasting LDL cholesterol levels collected at the physical examination visit of the enhanced for our study. To account for the cholesterol lowering effects of lipid lowering medications, measured LDL cholesterol levels were multiplied by a factor of 1.43 to estimate the untreated levels of LDL cholesterol in individuals who took lipid lowering medications. Severe dyslipidemia was defined as a corrected LDL cholesterol level equal to or greater than 190. Since LDL cholesterol levels were missing in approximately 55% of the study population, we used multiple imputation under the missing at random assumption to overcome the bias due to missing data. The examination survey weights were incorporated in our analytical models to account for the multi-state sampling techniques of the ENHANCE. Age-adjusted rates of self-reported awareness of hypercholesterolemia, self-reported evaluation of cholesterol levels in the past five years, and documented statin use were evaluated. In our study, we found that the prevalence of severe dyslipidemia was nearly 5.4% in the U.S. population, which remained stable between 2011 and 2020. Among individuals with severe dyslipidemia, approximately 75% underwent evaluation of cholesterol levels in the past five years and nearly 50% of individuals were aware that they had hypercholesterolemia. The trend of uh, awareness of hypercholesterolemia and cholesterol evaluation among individuals with severe dyslipidemia remained stable between 2011 and 2020. On examination of lipid lowering therapy among individuals with severe dyslipidemia, we found that only one in three individuals were on statins. Even on accounting for non-statin drugs such as PCSK9 inhibitors, bile acid sequestrants, or ezetimibe, our study noted that only one in three individuals with severe dyslipidemia were on any lipid-lowering medication across the study period. This finding indicates low rates of non-statin drug use. The large discordance noted between the high rates of awareness and evaluation and low rates of statin use among individuals with severe dyslipidemia may be attributed to provider level or patient level factors. At the end of the provider, prior literature describes an increasing trend of statin prescription over the past two decades, with statins being prescribed to up to 70% of individuals with severe dyslipidemia. Therefore, patient level factors may play a larger role in the low statin use rates among individuals with severe dyslipidemia. Decreasing adherence to statins with time is a well-known phenomenon. Even in individuals with a uh, high risk, nearly half the patients stop taking statin medications at the end of the first year and only 20% are adherent to statins at the end of five years. The low adherence to statins may be attributed to concerns of side effects of statins. The results of our study have several implications for clinical practice. Severe dyslipidemia may indicate an underlying genetic etiology such as familial hypercholesterolemia. Compared with the general population, individuals with severe dyslipidemia are 23 times more likely to have familial hypercholesterolemia. Therefore, genetic testing in these individuals may identify causal mutation. 
Furthermore, identification of the proband may prompt cascade screening efforts in the first degree relatives of the probands. These efforts may identify high risk individuals and prompt preventive efforts to reduce their risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Statin therapy remains the cornerstone of uh, risk reduction for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Our study highlights the need for changes at the policy and provider level to improve statin uh, use. At the level of health policy, focused efforts to improve health literacy, provision of low-cost insurance options, and improved access to healthcare are needed. At the level of the provider, a transparent discussion about known adverse events of statins and frequency of these events uh, before initiation of statin therapy may improve statin adherence. Additionally, vigilant monitoring for adverse events in patients on statin therapy should be conducted. Patients with statin intolerance should be switched to alternate non-statin drugs such as PCSK9 inhibitors or ezetimibe. To conclude, our study emphasizes the need to understand the determinants of statin use and formulate strategies to promote statin use and increase statin adherence among individuals with severe dyslipidemia. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.